to win in this building. Very few do it. Bill Self has got it going tonight. It's been a, a remarkable run for Bill Self and his players. Whitby again leads the nation in block shots. McLemore has tied it! The always packed Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. Welcome to Saturday's showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Today from Lawrence, Kansas, here at Buck Allen Fieldhouse, number three, Kansas, plays host to Oklahoma. Battle for first place in the Big 12 as Kansas is fresh off a win over K-State. Meanwhile, for Oklahoma, off to a very fast start. Lon Kruger's team at four and one. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. John Chavi alongside Grant Priscilla. Kansas with the nation's longest win streak, 16 in a row. As for Oklahoma, it's been a while since they have come in here and picked up a win. 1993, in fact. And Von Kruger building another quality program. He's got a solid team, five starters return. But the story of this team is not who returns, but who's been added. Yeah, the freshmen have really been a huge story for Lon Kruger's team, and that's our focus of the one-on-one, -on -one, those three guards. Absolutely. Starting with Buddy Heald, young man from the Bahamas who played his high school basketball in Wichita. Very explosive, energetic. John Hornby out of Arlington, Texas, also a starter. Good playmaker, good teammate. And Isaiah Cousins off the bench from Mount Vernon, New York. A history of college uh, stars coming out of that high school. Starting lineups now, and first for the visitors at Oklahoma, it'll be Buddy Heald, Jalon Hornby, Stephen Pledger, Amat Mbai, and Romero Osby up front. On the other side, Kansas so tough to beat at home. They go Elijah Johnson, Ben McLemore, the outstanding freshman, Travis Relaford, the three-guard attack, and up front, Kevin Young and the shot blocker, Jeff Whitby. What a job Bill Self has done as head coach for Kansas. Eight regular season titles in terms of the Big 12 and only seven home losses. Amazing stuff. It sure is. And the Jayhawks going up against the Sooners, as mentioned. Been a while since the Sooners have come into this building and picked up a win. Now you see one of two Division I head coaches to lead four or more schools to multiple NCAA tournament wins. He's trying to make it five. That would be something else. Absolutely. Wherever he's been, starting at Texas Pan American, Kansas State, Illinois, Florida, UNLV, and now here at Oklahoma. Trying to make it 33 in a row here at home at another sellout at the five. I'll tell you, this is a building that rocks, and it fills up in a hurry. I mean, they are in this place at before the, the game tips off. 16,300 come rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Withy and Osby will jump it up. Bert Smith tosses it in the air. And a loose ball, McLemore pounces on it. Johnson controls and the Jayhawks with the basketball. If you're Kansas, you're gonna wanna go inside early, I believe. They got a size advantage on, on Oklahoma with Withy. Back to more second leading score in the conference. Only Pierre Jackson averaging more points. The point guard from Baylor. We mentioned those freshman guards for a reason. But all three of them will need to play with poise and composure today in this building. This is an improved Oklahoma team. And this guy right here with the basketball, Romero Osby, has been a huge part of the improvement. Hey, keep in mind, John, Jeff Withy did not have a blocked shot on Tuesday at Kansas State. So that Alarity with the averaging over four blocks a game. With the inside of the jump hook, and that's too easy. Got a great position. Well, you got two guys for Oklahoma that go about 6'8, six, 6'9. Six, two good players. But they don't have the size to combat Jeff Whitley on the offensive end for Kansas. The Oklahoma off 
defensively. They don't shoot a ton of threes, but that guy right there can knock them down, Stephen Pledger. That's really important for Oklahoma. What you want to do early is you must match Kansas's scoring. A scoring drought against a team like this in their home building is devastating. Quick double team. Would be going opposite to Relaford down back to the middle. Relaford loses it out of bounds, Oklahoma basketball. Talked about going inside early. Nice delivery right here in the low post. Good jump hook. Nicely done. And then a the three-pointer by Stephen Pledger, the senior from Chesapeake, Virginia, climbing up those Oklahoma three-point shooting charts. Pledger actually the leading returning scorer in the Big 12. His number's down this year. Oklahoma trying to pull something off a win here at the five. They haven't done in quite some time, just about 20 years. Osby, offensive rebound, puts it up and in. I think when you talk about Jeff Whitney, I know as a coach, I would want to attack him as much as I could to try to get him in foul trouble. But these two guys are fairly physical for Oklahoma. And by and, and Osby, he's going to block a few. Kevin Young with the trouble. Now you'll love that if you're Bill <laughs> Self because teams have been laying off Kevin Young on that little jumper. The yep. Energizer Bunny. A steal, little ball fake, and a block right there by Hornby. Relaford rebounds the healed miss. Buddy healed the freshman. He was not shy about putting it up. And they get the offensive inside on Johnson. You see, Hornbeek already has made a couple of really good defensive plays. Take a look now. The out of control drive by Elijah Johnson. Hornbeek was just in the right spot. This young man played his high school basketball with Isaiah Austin in Dallas. Grace Prep and Arlington. Osby, little ball fake. Oh, and he couldn't dunk it. You, John, you don't want to give away easy opportunities to score. Uh, McLemore with some serious quickness. A freshman from St. Louis. He was a big part of their scout team last year. Bill Self said he was the best scout player in America as they went to the championship game. There's Whitney with a block. The big guy leading the break. McLemore. And he'll shoot three. And they get the foul there on Pledger. Boy, Ben McLemore, you, I talked to Doc Sadler a couple weeks ago, the director of operations, about Ben McLemore, and he calls him the natural, John. He said he's just a naturally gifted player. And it's not to say that he doesn't work hard, because we have seen him in practice stay for an hour afterwards. This young man has tremendous athleticism, a pure shooting stroke, an incredibly high ceiling. That move. Yeah, look at this now. He's going back to his left, shoots it with his right hand, kisses it off the window. Now Bill Self jokes as far as practicing last year. He said he doesn't know our offense very well because <laughs> playing for the scout team, all he was running was the other team's offense. Okay, it's, it's great to play on the scout team because no one ever tells you not to shoot. Yeah, we did that Gonzaga game, a couple of them, and Kelly Olenek, who's their big guy who redshirted last year, said he loved that aspect of it. He could just shoot and shoot. Mark Few would never yell at him. Last year, Ben McLemore was playing the role of guys like Stephen Pledger and, you know, Chris Babb and one of the good two guards in the league. Closing it out, 16 minutes to go first half. Kansas off to the four-point advantage. draws contact from Young, and he will go to the line. So our first time out here at Fog Allen, the Jayhawks, they've won 32 in a row here at home.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy. What will you do in five hours? And in part by Kia and the Sorento Crossover. Learn more at Kia.com and Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze. Back here in Lawrence and Kansas off to the early 9-5 lead. Lon Cougar and the Sooners trying to pick up a road win. Speaking of road trips, there's a quartet of Sooner students that are here in the house. Connor Choate, Nick Calloway, Cooper Cloud, Charlie Evenson. They were hanging around last night around 11 o'clock, 2 a.m. on a whim. They decided to drive the five hours, make it here to Lawrence. They were outside the team hotel this morning at 8.30 a.m. cheering for the Sooners as they boarded their bus for shoot-around. They're actually blaring their intro music, their video intro music, as the guys got on the bus. Ron invited them, Ron Cougar invited them to the shoot around, John, and they had a few extra tickets available. Now they're in the highest part of Allen Fieldhouse, but believe me, none of those four young men are complaining. Yeah, they get a chance to check out shoot around, as you mentioned, and check out one of the coolest buildings in all of America. You know, that's what Ron Kruger has done a great job of since he's been to Oklahoma, is trying to regenerate the interest in Sooner basketball. And that particular example, those four young men, is exactly what Ron Kruger has been all about. Yes, Luffy throws it down. Well, he had a bad break right there because Hornbeek got a piece of it. And when you come into a place like this as the road team, you've got to be able to handle adversity early. McLemore rebound pushing the pace. Young double team finds Whitney short on the dunk, and then he's fouled. Kansas getting a lot of in close looks. Now Oklahoma had a little half court pressure on there. Take a look. There's it comes back to Relaford, and then you see Whitney gets the easy one. And Lon Kruger not happy about that. You talk about a competitive guy, John. You know, when you talk to people around KU, and I talked to Bob Davis, the great play-by-play uh, -play guy, and he said, Lon Kruger may be one of the great athletes to ever come out of the state of Kansas. Was a baseball draft pick twice, highly recruited quarterback, wound up playing for Jack Hartman at Kansas State. How about this? Sophomore of the year, back with freshman one, and two-time Big A player. Had an amazing career at Kansas State. Of course, got a chance to coach at his alma mater. With you, the Jayhawks leading by five. And by the give off, and Cousins flips that one to heel. Right now, you have the three freshmen out there in the backcourt together. Oh, there's Withy erasing that shot by Cousins. Withy's at his best when you don't get to his body. It allows him to use his length. This is Nadir Tharp, who steps on the sideline. It's a turnover. Tharp, a point guard, who comes off the bench to help out. Normally, this is a great play by Cousins, but you see Withy, he works on the backside, so they never get to his body, and it allows him, basically, to use that volleyball-like athletic ability that he has, where he gets off his feet at the very last possible moment. Osby, a good look at him. And that rattles home. Romero Osby, a Mississippi State transfer. He's averaging a little over 19 a game in five Big 12 games. You know, the most important thing, John, he's become a great team leader for the Sooners. Quality guy, good family man. Osby rebounding the freshman Perry Ellis' miss. Turnover number two on the series. One thing Lon Kruger has done a nice job of with Osby is where they have a top of the key drive to his advantage, they'll take it. But that time, good job rallying that drive by Travis Relic. I've said this to you before, but anytime I brought a team into a place 
just like this. You want to play the game from TV to timeout to TV timeout. By that I mean treat it as four minute games. Are they going inside? Flips it up and in. Biggest guy in the court. He's got seven. They're running their bread and butter stuffer with the early in this game. Oklahoma does a good job of scouting, but it gets back to what I said. In each four-minute period, you must stay mentally focused. So far, Kansas has done a nice job of executing. Field off balance wouldn't go out of bounds. Fitzgerald couldn't corral it. Take a look at Jeff Withy now. He's going to come right across the lane. See a nice back screen by McLemore. And they get Fitzgerald, who's just into the game. And you know what you love about that? Phil Self will save something for his team when, a, when, when the opponent substitutes a, a, a new player. So they got Fitzgerald fresh off the bench on a cross screen inside. Ellis going to work. The Ford's contact and puts it in. Big time recruit out of the state of Kansas from Wichita. And Perry Ellis in the last two weeks has made a huge jump in his contribution. Biggest lead so far for the Jayhawks. Bill Self has been demanding that Perry Ellis plays more physically, more aggressively. This is what he's talking about right here. Young man, four-time Gatorade State Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American, four state titles. I mentioned to you before the game, Wichita Heights High School produced Darnell Valentine, along with Antoine Carr, the current New York Met, right? Mike Pelton, Stuart Mets. Yeah. I'm not sure that Mike Pelton is actually still with the Mets. But he comes out of that high school, good major yep. leader. A lot of talent. See, right now, Oklahoma shooting the ball too quickly. This is right up Kansas's alley. Seven-point advantage. Clark back in the game. Bill Self is a little unhappy with him early in this one. See if they go high-low right here. Johnson had a really good look at it. Fitzgerald the board. violation and a turnover are under 12 timeout and when we come back we'll talk offense the bread and butter for Bill Self's team back here in Lawrence at the Fog Allen Fieldhouse Bill Self with the Jayhawks leading by seven John Chambi Fran Fraschilla with you time for Fran's focus Let's talk some offense. How does Kansas get all those in-close looks? Well, they have bread and butter plays, okay? And you know early in a game what you want to attack in the defense. And let's take a look. If you go back to the Baylor game here a couple Monday nights ago, early in the game, might have been the first play, or, or early in this game, come off the high ball screen, kick it, and now watch with the inside. He seals his defender to the inside and up the lane. Nadir Thok recognizes that. He's got the angle to the corner of the board. Leads him away from the defense. Puts it right on the money for his little patented jump hook. Today, first play of the game, ball screen. Kick it over to that guard. Post inside, same play, same result. Coaches get comfortable with what they want to do to attack a defense early in the game. And I think Bill Self is as good as there is at playing the game from inside the paint back out to the perimeter. They will never be just a jump shooter team. Johnson catch and shoot short there. Out of bounds off Pledger, and it's Kansas basketball. And if you're Oklahoma right now, you lost that second TV timeout from 16 to 12. So you've got to refocus right now and try to climb back into this game. And where they've got to do it is stops, defensive rebounds, and boys on offense. Trailer looks opposite. Relifer. You get a foul there in Jamari Trailer, the freshman out of Chicago. Now let's take a look at it from Oklahoma's point of view. You force.
forced a jumper. You got the defensive rebound. And now on the offensive end, you must cleanly run your stuff, execute it, and get a quality shot right here. This is a different Oklahoma team than the one that went 15 and 16. All five starters back, but only two of them are starting. The infusion of talent, the freshman, improved play from Osby. It's Gerald, a former starter. Short with that shot, trailer the board. Here's Relaford up ahead. Going at Grooms. Pretty good by Sam Grooms right there. Cut off that angle on the drive without fouling. Doesn't see him coming. Hornbeak to Pledger. Good hustle by the Sooners. And a fresh shot clock. Well, the freshman has made a number of really good hustle plays early in this game. One of the reasons they've gone to Fitzgerald is because he's had good success against Kansas in the past. Sam Groom's a guy who was a former starter. Look at all the starts between Fitzgerald, Clark, Grooms, and between the three of them combined, they started once this year. You gotta give credit to these guys, older players who are making the adjustment to come off the bench and they've accepted the role. Well, one of the reasons they've accepted it is because if you look at this lineup, nine guys play between 15 and 27 minutes. So every one of these guys has bought into the fact that they're just doing their part to help Ron Kruger continue to try to build this program. Like Bloom started every game last year. Fitzgerald started every game as a sophomore and a junior. Out of bounds. And it'll be Kansas basketball. And on the Deer Tharp got away with one there because Pledger got a piece of it, but on the follow through the pass, he just threw that out of bounds. Pledger was pleading his case with Gary Maxwell to no avail. <laughs> K-State, they scored a season of 59 points. As Trailer reverses it, protecting himself in the rim. Bill Self has really nurtured this bench. Look at that drive right there. He was blocked. Trailer rejects Grooms. And a carry and a turnover. Number four on the Jayhawks. Uh, Jamari Trailer, Terry Ellis, take a look at Trailer again. If you don't get to the shot blocker's body, you're just allowing him to use his height and athleticism. But what you love about Bill Self right now is Nadir Tharp, Perry Ellis, J uh, Jamari Trailer, each of them is starting to grow as the season unfolds, and that Kansas bench is starting to grow. Traditionally, John, Bill Self is a nine man rotation guy, five perimeters, four posts. That's how he coaches uh, Roberts, Tulsa, and then the rest of his career. He likes that rotation. Down on Kansas right here. And that one will be on Elijah Johnson. That is his second. Traditionally as well, Bill Self's team outstanding defensively. This year, number one of the nation in field goal defense. As Rio Adams checks in, the freshman from Seattle. But Bill Self's team, they can lock you down defensively, and they have so far. Oklahoma's three for 15 from the floor and one for its last 11. That's been a big part of the story here is Kansas leads by eight under 10 to go first half. And Leo Adams, one of those freshmen that uh, is trying to earn playing time. Watched him in practice. He could be an excellent defender. He had a great practice yesterday, John, as you know. Tough shot. So you cannot win if you're Oklahoma taking shots like that. But credit that Kansas defense. So things out of sorts. Three for 16 offensively for the Sooners. And again, there is that defense. Elvis trying to flip it over to the corner. Out of bounds. It stays with Kansas. Rio Adams right now, the young man from Rainier Beach High School, which has produced so many good players. This is his moment right here with Elijah Johnson in foul trouble. He is desperately trying to fight for some playing time. And although they've got an eight-point lead right now, this is, this is a big moment for him in a big 12 contest. Yeah, it's an 
opportunity, a chance that maybe he'll see his, his minutes go up. Ledger takes it away. At the rim, high off the glass, and it hangs in the rim and falls. You love the way he got body to body on McLemore, who is a shot blocker for a guard. 30-second timeout here at Fog Allen, and we'll take it with them. The Sooners on the road. They haven't won here in Fog Allen since 1993. Can Stephen Fletcher and the Sooners pull off the trick? We'll see. My boyfriend and I were going on vacation, so I used my city thank you card to pick up some accessories. A new belt, some nylons, and what girl wouldn't need new shoes? And with all the points I've been earning, I was able to get us a flight to our favorite climbing spot, even on a holiday weekend. Things are definitely looking up. With no blackout dates, you can use your city thank you points to travel whenever you want. Visit city.com slash thank you cards to apply. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. Also watch ESPN. Good doubleheader. You got seven Eastern, number five Louisville taking on Pitt, then number three Kansas against West Virginia. That'll be at nine Eastern from Morgantown. I know you'll be there, Coach Fran. Yes, I will. But yeah. Louisville lose another today. They dropped two straight. First Villanova, now Georgetown. Two big wins for them. The first time in their history, John, that they've beaten back-to-back -back top five teams in the same week. Got a three as time was winding down to send it to overtime. And then one in OT. Shot clock under 10. Young launching. The teams will give Young that shot so that they can double-team with the inside. He knocked down the first one. Good execution right there. Osby with the drive and the kick. Watch out. I mean, the seized party for McLemore couldn't finish. But eventually it ends up with the Sooners and Steven Pledger. Difficult here today for Oklahoma. They'll slow it down as Hornbeak runs it. Young tips it away. Young at the bucket. Energizer Bunny. The Loyola Marymount transfer. He's seen his minutes this season double. Again, lack of execution by Oklahoma. They tried to run a set, and Young just jumped the passing lane. We get a foul on Rio Adams. And Kevin Young, he knows his role, John. Hustle plays, offensive rebounds, the occasional steal, and the highlight dunk to get this crowd rocking and rolling. Here at Fog Allen, yep. Kansas off to an eight-point lead. Fear the throw. Kevin Young, that last steal and the dunk, he's got four points. And we take a look at our ESPN virtual shot chart. Defense has been huge here today for the Kansas Jayhawks as they have limited the Oklahoma Sooners from the field. Well, they're getting a lot of quality looks. They haven't knocked them down. And I told you earlier, John, when you come into... Allen Fieldhouse, you see where all their shots are, and some of them, some from behind the arc, most in the lane. But you have to be able to score buckets, and you got to make shots that you normally make. You cannot win a grinded out game against Kansas in here very often. A lot of those X's from in close that had some point blank opportunities that just haven't converted. Obviously, with Withy in the middle, he is a shot challenger, third best in the NCAA in blocks per game at a little over four. Osby right at him. There's another block. Boy, Withy did a tremendous job of staying on the ground. Well, they tried to ISO Withy right there. Clark with that bucket. Cameron Clark, another guy who was starting a season ago. He has become a really good role player, John. 
Ron Kruger convinced him to play a little bit of power forward, even though he's a natural wing player. And he has had some good moments. But they came out of the timeout trying to isolate Osby at about 14 feet on Withy. Osby got to the lane, but Withy just stays on the ground, and he uses that lane. He's blocked shots this year without even jumping. Yeah, Withy, seven feet tall, native of San Diego, actually originally signed with Arizona. Hey, and he committed to Louisville. <laughs> and close, gets his own miss and puts it home. He's got nine. Oklahoma has given up four baskets exactly like that. You remember the near steal and then the dunk? You have to play nearly perfect in here. You can't give Kansas easy baskets. Relaford comes away with it. Oh, and a great block there. And then the put back by McLemore. Embi got a piece. But it didn't matter. See, Long Kruger doesn't argue very often, but that time the defender came over, the Oklahoma player's back. Clark will shoot two, and the foul on Withy. Uh, take a look at this now. Watch Withy. They continue to get the ball. There's that, we call that pass, the corner of the backboard pass. They do a great job. See that angle right there? There's that jump hook he hit earlier, and then the hustle by Kansas on the backboard. Jeff Withy coming up at his own miss. Last foul on Whitby is first. 17 fouls on the Jayhawks. Only two on the Sooners as Clark can't convert. Jeff Whitby, seven double doubles this season. He's got nine points in this one. 0 for 2 for Clark with a rebound tracked down by Amat Embai, the junior from Bordeaux, France, Wyoming transfer. Embi has really started to play well lately. There's that ISO again. Yeah, I don't think you're going to beat uh, Kansas with contested jumpers over the top of Whitby. Healed with a steal, then it's knocked away. Relaford, Heal puts it in. Now, Oklahoma's in a situation right now. Look at Heal defensively. This is what we talked about. Freshman plays with great charisma. the Tharp miss and now Brooms as much as Oklahoma has struggled they've done a pretty good job of keeping it close they have to be solid in their execution and by uh, so you cannot take that shot right there that's good defense by Kansas walling off the lane watch this drive good contest Checking in for It has been some lockdown defense by the Jayhawks. Lon Kruger's team has struggled to score as Clark will grab a seat. You know, John, Bill Self has never had a team in Kansas that's given up 40% field goal percentage defense or higher. This is the 10th team he's had. Finish, but Withy goes down to the ground, no call. Four minutes to go here, first half. Oklahoma hanging around, trailing by eight. There's that ISO again. Good job by Withy. He's able to space on that drive because of his size. Brooms at the free throw line. Got it. Not a guy known for his outside shot. You know what he's done for this young Oklahoma backcourt? He settles those freshman guards down. Last few games, he's playing near 20 minutes a game. You mentioned that he was a starter last year. From the junior college All-American point guard. <laughs> Relaford buries a three. Travis Relaford shooting 42% from three, and that's his first three points of the game. The kick out from Cousins, and then Embi tracks it down. Embi 
Allen is trying to fly and dunk. Whippy draws the offensive foul. Embi picks up his second. Lodge Burger's team on the road. The Jayhawks have won 32 straight in this building. Super Tuesday features two games from two of the nation's top conferences. First, Deshaun Thomas and the Buckeyes host Big Ten big man Jared Bergeron and Wisconsin with the Badgers hungry for another road upset. Then, Coach Calipari's Wildcats play the underdog role on the road against Old Miss and SEC scoring leader Marshall Henderson. Wisconsin, Ohio State at 7 and Kentucky Ole Miss at 9. Tuesday on ESPN. Steve Weissman in studio coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. After one of the worst losses in Coach K's career, how would Duke respond against Maryland? Rashid Suleiman with a career game will show it to you. Plus, Syracuse has its worst shooting performance in four years as Villanova pulls off a shocker and an incredible finish between Georgetown and Louisville. That's all at the half. For now, let's go back to Allen Fieldhouse. John and Fran. All right, Steve. Hey, there's Super Jayhawk enjoying this one. All right, losses in the top ten this week. Today, we've already had two. Villanova and Georgetown pulling off the trick. Duke getting blasted on the road at Miami. Butler losing. Louisville, we talked about it twice this week. But I mean, if you notice, five of those six games were on the road. Mm -hmm. And you get to conference play and play a team at, at their home place, difficult to do. Hey, right now, Kansas's defense has been stellar. Absolutely stellar. Yield comes up with a loose ball. He was eyeing up Cameron Clark. Talk about the poise of those Oklahoma guards. I'd say the uh, results so far very mixed. Osby at Ellis and Withy. Uh, that time he took Ellis, but Withy comes from the weak side again. He doesn't get credit for a block right there, John, but that was a tremendous defensive stop by Jeff Withy. Withy with nine, leading all scores in the game. It in deep. Gonna work on Osby. And with he will shoot two. Take a look at this right here. Here's the drive. Osby's got Ellis, the freshman. But you see with the work, and he doesn't even need to block the shot at seven feet going against six eight. All he's got to do is challenge Osby, take away his vision at the rim. Jeff Withy working on his eighth double-double of the year. And you see year by year, the minutes and the points have gone up. Last year, Fran, at 29.8 and 13 points again. He really, or that's this year, but yeah. last year, 24.8 and 9, he really finished with a flourish. He was a big key for them making their run. Well, and I think one of the reasons he's gained so much confidence in his career is because you look at guys he went up against, Cole Aldridge, Markeith Morris, Marcus Morris, last year Thomas Robinson, all those guys, NBA players, and he's developed. They go at the lock, and then another block. Here's Relaford up ahead. Defense into offense. If there's one reason, Kansas leads by 11. It's number five in white. Jeff Withy with four blocks in the game. He averages 4.3. Take a look right here. There's his fourth one. And that leads to the run out. Again, when you play Kansas, you've got to be efficient offensively. If you're not, they're going to get those easy baskets on the other end. Well, ESPN's journey to the tourney is a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament tonight. James Michael McAdoo in North Carolina looking to pick up a big road win and improve their tourney chances. They'll take on C.J. Leslie at number 18, NC State. Saturday primetime presented by Direct TV. And Roy Williams has gotten his team to settle in a bit, starting to play better. And C.J. Leslie and company, very, very talent, talented. You see those two, McAdoo averaging just under 15 a game, Leslie just over 15. And it, well, NC State coming off that loss at Wake Forest earlier in the week, so 
They're going to have to bounce back. They've been hot and cold this season. Withy Wonka. Withy Wonka. Kansas certainly not playing like Oompa Loompas today. A minute to go here in the first half. Pledger. Steven Pledger last year shot 42% from three. It hasn't been as good this year, but he's a great shooter. Well, he just he just gave Bill Self a little angst because Relaford helped a little bit on the drive, and he gave Pledger a little bit of separation. Bill Self said, that's not the scouting report. Ple uh, Relaford did an incredible job on Tuesday against uh, Robin McGruder. Almost a turnover forced by the pressure from Cameron Clark. Tell you what, if Oklahoma goes down only eight, it's going to be a moral victory. Sharp almost stepped on the mid-court strike. Relaford handling here. Sharp going to work. A three. And a foul inside. Gary Maxwell actually saying that Cameron Clark grabbed the jersey there. There's that shot going up. Good eye. Yep. He did yeah, grab Perry sure Ellis' yep. jersey. No, they're not shooting it, so it's a break. Four seconds on the clock. Only five team fouls and the Sooners clock winding down. Relaford launches. So Oklahoma will indeed go to the break. Down just eight. Kansas defense, as per usual, it's been outstanding. The Jayhawks trying to make it 33 in a row at home and 17 in a row overall. Here's some of that defense led by Jeff Withy. Four first half blocks. Back to the studio, Steve Wiseman and our UPS halftime report. All right, thank you very much and welcome into our UPS halftime report. Steve Wiseman alongside the coach, Seth Greenberg. Seven of the AP top 12 teams in this week's poll have gone down. Duke started 15 and 0. They've lost two of their last three. And Coach K said, we're looking forward to changing the direction we've been going. Could they do it against Maryland, Coach? Well, they lost to Miami by 27 in their last game. Second half, though, Rashid Suleiman went off. Great sign for Duke. Suleiman, a freshman, sticks 25 points. And his partner in crime, Emil Jefferson, he gets a double-double. How about Mason Plumley as well? Another double-double. Later in the second half, Plumley, Suleiman, and well, he had six threes in this game. You mentioned the 25 points. Duke has won six trade against Maryland. Their starters outscored the turf 79 to 37. Still to come, two of the top five teams in the country went down today. See what Villanova did to make some history. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Alka Seltzer Plus Cold and Cough and Wendy's. Now that's better. Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. Steve Weissman, Coach Seth Greenberg back with you. Syracuse visiting Villanova today. First half, Nova up seven. Darren Hilliard, career high, 25 points in this game, Coach. 15 in the first half on sixth rate shooting. Meanwhile, Syracuse would have its struggles by Michael Carter Williams in the second half. What happens here? Tries to make something out of nothing. Live ball turnover creates an easy offense for the Wildcats. That was goaltending. Then more Carter Williams issues. Q shot 34% of as a team. Michael Carter Williams trying to make hard plays out of easy plays. Come to a jump stop. Pull up and shoot the jumper. Point guard's got to be able to make free throws. He was 8 of 14 at the line. 10 seconds to go. Ryan Archidiakono with the three to tie. CJ Fair misses the block out on the weak side. We're going to overtime. Tied at 61. Now in OT. What's going on here? Jeremy Grant's in foul trouble. He's out. So is Bakita. Brandon Trish on the weak side. He has to play the power forward position. He gets sealed in, and again, on ball reversal. There's Trish at 6-4, trying to deal with Javon Pinkston. He seals him. All of a sudden, now C.J. Fear has to give weak side help and shrink the court. Here's the kick out to James Bell. He knocks down a three. Brandon Trish sliding to the small forward spot in the zone. Really hurt Syracuse. Here, ball goes into the post. You've got to fan and find the next offensive player. C.J. Fair turns his head. There's the back door. 
again, you've got to keep the game in front. You cannot double team the basketball. You've got to fan and find the next offensive player. It's rush the court week. Yeah, they love to do it at the Wells Fargo Center with the big win over Cuse Villanova entering some rarefied air. The Wildcats becoming the first unranked team to win back-to-back -back games over top five teams since Ball State did it in November of 2001. But Syracuse not the only top five squad to go down today. How about Georgetown taking on Louisville? What's Russ Smith doing? Well, right now, Russ Smith, it's more about Georgetown's defense. They decided to stay home on his shooters and force the driver to become a two-point player here. They stay home, they fan out, forcing Russ Smith to be a scorer. They contest the shot, and again, another live ball turnover. Tie game, here comes Georgetown. Oh, Aaron Bowen, fancy reverse for the putback. And well, late in the second half, Georgetown's up one. What? Smith and Siva with issues. Again, Siva trying to leave his feet. You can leave your feet to shoot and pass, but you cannot leave your feet to pass and shoot. Here he gets up in the air. Georgetown stays home, forcing him to be a scorer. Hard pass in tight quarters. Another turnover. They get it back again. Shot is off the mark. Now they call this a jump ball. Otto Porter can't believe what's going on. Neither can JT3, so Louisville's got another chance. Got another chance. They came out zone. They switched back to man-to-man. -man. They forced Peyton Seaver to make the play off the bounce. They downed the ball screen, forcing him away from the screen. Contested shot. Georgetown wins. Peyton Seaver held scoreless for the first time since March of 2010. Louisville drops its third straight game. Meanwhile, Notre Dame wins its eighth straight against South Florida. Big bounce back game for Notre Dame. They struggled. This was a game they had to have on the road. Jack Cooley, 14 rebounds in that one. Let's go Big Ten. Ohio State, number 14 team, taking on Penn State. First half, Buckeyes down one. Aaron Kraft to Deshaun Thomas. Deshaun Thomas doing what Deshaun Thomas does, knocking down jumpers. But most importantly, Ohio State, three players in double figures. Sam Thompson led him in scoring. Yeah, Kraft, he plays good defense. Great with the jumper. Second half, Lenzel Smith Jr. Right. to your man, Sam Thompson. Sam Thompson, he is a terrific finisher in traffic. Later second half, Kraft to Thomas. No, Evan Ravenel there, and Ohio State rolls by 14. Well, from defense to offense, Kevin Young, four points as Kansas up eight on Oklahoma. More on the UPS Halftime Report next. This Halftime Report is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Is it possible Applebee's new entrees are full of flavor and under 550 calories each? <laughs> I'll believe it when I taste it. I believe it! I can dig it! Okay, a bit of an overreaction, but uh, what now? Ah, the old great taste under 550 calories flash mob bed. Yeesh. The new zesty Roma chicken and shrimp and roasted garlic sirloin. Big flavor under 550 calories. Starting at just $9.99. See you tomorrow. And late night for half price apps. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Steve Weissman, Coach Seth Greenberg, back with you. Brittany Griner, one of your three to see in women's hoops this year, and she's making history today. First half, Baylor up five. Griner, she had 15 points, eight rebounds, eight blocks. It was the latter stat that would make her set a record, Coach. 664 block, NCAA record. She's like a human backboard, and she gets it in transition, she just might throw it down on you. <laughs> she certainly would. 82 to 65, Baylor rolling. Back to the men's game. K-State, Iowa State. Second half, Wildcats down three. Live ball turnovers. They get you every single time. You've got to take care of the basketball. You love the mayor, Fred Hoiberg. He's got those transfers in there. Corey Lucius, one of them from MSU. How about George Niang with the three? Iowa State pulling off the upset. Help Magic and the mayor, Fred Hoiberg. Tough combination. Elsewhere, Oklahoma State over West Virginia. Phil Forte, career-high 26 points, six threes. That matches a career-high as well. Markel Brown, a season-high 24 with five dimes. Well, here's what to watch for tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN, and of course, watch ESPN. Our journey to the tourney game between North Carolina and NC State. Plenty of tournament experience, success between these two programs, including seven national titles, the Tar Heels, have won the last 13 meetings between these two. The game day crews down there and everything. What are you expecting, Coach? Too much Lorenzo Brown and too much Richard Howe. Howe is a low post scorer. NC State is the triple threat. They can score it in transition. 
They shoot 51% from the field, and they can score it in a block. One of the best low post scoring teams in all of college basketball. Too much at home. Game day magic, pack win. All right, I saw you were playing Coach Gottfried earlier today, right? On the earlier half. I just want show. his paycheck. Forget about playing him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, X Games going on on ABC right now, and Sean White, not exactly what he wanted to see earlier today. Sean White finished fifth, has not medaled in slope style at X Games Aspen since 2009 on his first run, landed the first official triple cork in any slope style competition, but does not medal. Mark McMorris, back-to-back -back snowboard slope style gold medals. There is Sean White Ooh, that going hurt. down. That guy's the best, too. I love that guy. The flying tomato coach. <laughs> Jeff Wimpy leading Kansas right now, 29 21 at the half. We'll be back with second half action next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the 2013 Lexus LS and all new LSF Sport, an entirely new pursuit. Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. And here at Five Gallon Fieldhouse, Kansas up by eight at the break playing great defense, a huge rebound advantage as well. Hi, everybody. John Chambi alongside Fran Fraschilla, that first half story. Kansas defense, especially in the middle, as you check out our ESPN Hot Zone virtual look. And it's amazing the job that Kansas has done on Oklahoma. Well, you see those six points in the paint. Take a look in that blue area, three for 14. And it's not just, just Jeff with these block shots. It's the amount of shots that he's challenged at the rim that he didn't block today. And Oklahoma shooting 29%. Yeah, the Sooners with a season low, 21 first half points. Here's Kevin Young. Well, and it started with Kansas' defense. Both coaches are going to be unhappy with aspects of play. For Bill Self, certainly, he's got to be pleased with his defense leading the offense. And then they established with the early inside against the undersized Osby and Eli. And he did a nice job of scoring. For Oklahoma, John, Stephen Pledger knocked down a couple threes, being guarded by Travis Relaford, one of the league's best defenders. Gets loose there, late in the half, got loose again. So Oklahoma down eight. Sounds like a lot, but they could be down a whole lot more based on the way this man has played tonight. Yeah, Withy has been great, closing it on his eighth double-double of the year, nine and seven. Meanwhile, Stephen Pledger shooting it well. Oklahoma basketball to start the second half. The Jayhawks, the nation's longest win streak at 16 in a row. And they have won 32 in a row in this building. Only Syracuse with a longer home court streak. Two freshmen back on the floor for Oklahoma right now. And again, it's about poise, patience, and execution for the Sooners. Osby. Young rebounds the miss. McLemore wasn't looking. Osby gets it back. And then Young, good hands. Yeah, he challenges. He challenges. Boy, oh, and Roe Osby knows he gave away a perfect opportunity. And I'll tell you, a little play. Look at that deflection by Kevin Young. Now, that breaks up a lob. And then with the, you got to give him credit, John. For the most part, he plays vertical. So even when you see contact, if you're a Sooner fan right now, you're going, well, that's a foul. Not if the defender goes vertical to the ceiling. It's tough. With the... Just his presence is going to have Sooner players alter shots. Osby very frustrated right now. See, I think the biggest thing with Withy, again, you've got to go right at him. There's that lob again. Turnover, Oklahoma ball. Now, on the road, the challenge to the three freshmen, Hornbeek, Heald, and Cousins. How'd you think they handled it in the first half? Fair, average. I'd give them a C, C minus. 
Too many sloppy turn turnovers early. You know what was a big play early in the game was when Osby missed that dunk. Oklahoma was off to a good start, a lot of execution. And I just don't think you're going to beat o uh, Kansas with, with Roe Osby knocking down that shot, even though he can. Macklemore short on that shot. Out of bounds, Sooners basketball. You remember what I said in halftime, both coaches were unhappy. Bill Self is definitely unhappy, unhappy with his team's offensive execution in the eight turnovers. Of course, Juan Kruger feels like they've given a lot of opportunities offensively away. With the contest there, didn't block it, but made it difficult. What he does is he takes away your vision if you're driving, even if you don't get the shot blocked. McLemore, the prize freshman for Kansas, Young off balance, nice move using the glass. Sometimes when you back off a guy as slithery as Young, you give him a head start and a head of steam on his drives. It's exactly what Kevin Young did right there. I never like to back off those guys, even though I didn't think they could score. I'd rather pressure their passes. Must be right here. If he gets a piece, M by a couple of ball fakes, rejected. Feed inside, another rejection. And at this time, a foul is called. See, I think you have to keep challenging. I believe you have to keep going at them, but you must go body to body on these shot blockers. There's a nice dump off. And take a look right now. Now that time with he does get him on the arm, but rather than baby that ball up there, both him by and Osby this year have done a good job of attacking the rim. And by right here, preseason Big 12 newcomer of the year coming in averaging. Ten points, five and a half rebounds. A transfer, as we mentioned, from Wyoming. Both Osby and Embi transfers. We got another really good one sitting out. Ryan Spangler, young man from Blanchard, Oklahoma. Mark Few hated to see him leave. He had a double double in the NCAA tournament last year. He's a six-eight sophomore. He's got that look in his eye, John. And I watched him in practice. But he wants to take your head off on every play. Tough kid. A great addition next year. Be a sophomore along with these three freshman guards. Zaga transfer should certainly help. Elijah Johnson, first half saddled by a little bit of foul trouble. He picked up two quickies. Backlamore into the paint, flips it up, and an offensive foul. Good job there by Embi. Well, NBA Sunday Showcase on ABC. It starts with a doubleheader tomorrow afternoon at 1. LeBron James leads the Heat into Boston. They'll square off against Rajon Rondo and the Celtics. Then 3.30, Kevin Durant and Oklahoma City. They have the best record in the NBA. They'll go up against Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. Lakers looking to find some consistency. They have been really disappointing. Boy, I tell you, they are mentally very fragile right now. And physically as well yeah, this year. It's true. been a story. Well, they're, they're, they're physically fragile, but boy, I'm not sure they even, they, they just don't have great chemistry right now. Oh, that is a loser. And right there, Hornby tried to thread the needle, couldn't. Well, at first, tips it ahead, lays it in. Another one of those run-out baskets because of the sloppiness of Oklahoma. Very opportune Kansas defense. If you're Oklahoma, where do you go offensively? You know, you got to keep running your stuff. I, I think you got to still play through the inside. Embi hits the jumper. Embi and Osby, they've been your bread and butter all year, particularly Osby. I'd like to see just a little bit more of attacking the basket from them. Young just beyond the free throw line. And McLemore a rebound, and he's fouled. No 
Bill Self may not be thrilled with the offense, but he'll love this defense because it's gotten them some easy baskets. The fifth-year seniors with Ida Relliford. Nicely done. Kansas by eight as the Sooners continue to stick around. You see the coaches wearing those sneakers. It's coaches versus cancer. NABC Suits and Sneaker Awareness Weekend. It's sponsored by the American Cancer Society. You see that every year and obviously a great cause. Coaches on both teams and coaches across the country wearing the, the sneakers. Absolutely. Closing, on, closing in, John, on raising $100 million. The American Cancer Society somewhere in Palm Springs or maybe he's in Columbia Norm Stewart's watching this game I know coach you're watching the Jayhawks you can admit it although Mizzou plays Vandy coming up on ESPNU but uh, Norm Stewart Jim Beheim had a lot to do with the start of coaches uh, versus cancer the sneakers and, and just the whole involvement of the coaching community and what they can do to fight that disease and again nice to see coaches on both sides wearing the sneakers. Macklemore draining the free throws gives Kansas a 10-point advantage. By the way, when Norm Stewart coached in this league, he coached against uh, Lonnie Kruger, the guard from K-State, and the guard from the Oklahoma State. Fitzgerald offensive rebound put back. He was a concern of Bill Self's scouting report because Andrew Fitzgerald, who, as we mentioned, has been a starter for much of his career, has always bothered Jayhawks. He's one of those guys that plays below the rim, but he's very crafty and can knock down a jump shot. John Shambi Frank for Schiller here at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Jayhawks have won 32 in a row here. Bill Self with seven home losses his entire time as Kansas head coach. Johnson. Poorly as Oklahoma has played offensively, John, they are still hanging around. Shot, but that's what Fitzgerald can do. Johnson slashing in his first two of the afternoon. Heel will try. Fitzgerald with a big rebound. Out of bounds, it stays with the Sooners. When you watch Oklahoma right now, you wonder what those freshman guards are thinking because if you're a veteran player, you can explain to them what it's like playing in here. But until you do it, it's uh, daunting. And Buddy Heald's got to have some idea. He actually with the high school, Brooklyn Obama is with the high school about two hours away. There's Heald with the tear That's drop as he flips it in. I asked him. Prior to the game, I said, have you ever been here before? He said, yeah, one time, a couple years ago, I went to see Kansas and Iowa State here at Fog Allen. Uh, he played summer basketball with Perry Ellis. He was a young man at the high school in Wichita. He comes it out. Here is Ellis inside. And by the board. On the move, it's Hornby. Whitby takes it away. Now it's tied up. Possession arrow belongs to Kansas. Again, one of those freshman mistakes by Hornby. Got in deep, lost the ball. And Kansas will get it on the alternating possession. Take a look. See, Hornby's got it. He's got to slow down in city traffic right there. And that's one of those giveaways when you're trying to come back in a game like this. Again. He's probably not going to make that mistake the next time he gets to have that opportunity. And I'm with you on the city traffic. I mean, there's <laughs> traffic getting out of here here in Lawrence. I mean, they have 16,000 people, but we don't have anywhere to go tonight. <laughs> Fair enough. Right? We're going to hang out in Kansas City, watch some basketball. But you're right. You know, he's got to know what he can do and what he can't get away with. Ellis rebounds the Relliford miss. Relliford cutting. Ellis feeds. I'm going to tell you, the transformation of Perry Ellis in the last two weeks, I've watched them since practice in October, amazing. I even called them soft, I think, early in the season. Mac 
Sycamore chips it up. Relaford spinning. And now Coons the other way. And Relaford is guarding every good scorer on the perimeter in the Big 12. He's really done a good job on pleasure today. Look at those hands. Rooms has his pass deflected. Fitzgerald with the rebound. He's played well. Don't you feel like Oklahoma's down 25? The way, the way they've played? And you keep looking, and it's basically been 10, 8, and sometimes 6 the whole afternoon. Ledger way off, Fitzgerald the put back. Those two great friends from the same area of the country. Pledger, Virginia, Fitzgerald from Maryland. Hey, and remember, Fitzgerald was a high school teammate of Thomas Robinson and the Deer Tharp at Brewster Academy. Eight-point game here in Lawrence. Jayhawks with the nation's longest win streak. They've had 16 in a row and a huge three by Elijah Johnson who was scoreless in the first half, has five since the break. When you look at Relaford, you look at Johnson, you're talking about guys, this isn't their first rodeo, John. They've played in so many pressure games. Osby soft touch. About the cleanest look Osby has had today without Withy in the lineup. Six points for the senior, averages just under 15. Relaford inside, and he's fouled. You remember when Elijah Johnson was sitting the bench as a freshman and a sophomore? They asked him if he was transferred. He said, no, I'm a Jayhawk for life. And boy, the crowd won't let him forget it. Hey, let's go to the game. I'll dress as Spider-Man and watch the Jayhawks. Up by nine here at home, and... ESPN College Basketball. It's available live anytime, anywhere in your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and with the Watch ESPN app. John Chomby, Fran Fraschilla here at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. And I don't understand. When did it start? Let's go to the game. You know what? I'll get a penguin outfit. <laughs> you dress as a gorilla. I'll go as a banana. Someone will be Spider-Man. I don't get it. But... Make sure we wear our K Kansas Jayhawk jerseys. No, I, I right? that that part I understand. <laughs> we'll figure out what we come as next week. How about this guy? He missed his first 11 three-point shots on the season. And since then, he's been well over 50 percent. Yeah, the year 42 percent. Mm -hmm. Relaford has 10 of course his little bro trevor point guard at alabama Number 11 to go here second half oklahoma continues to hang around clark with those good hands by relaford and eventually it leads to a turnover he sped clark up that time he chased clark he shot the gap clark didn't know where he was and then he just threw that ball behind him and Travis Relaford, you talk about how valuable he has been. He redshirted one year and he wasn't getting much playing time. With the down low, working on a smaller Fitzgerald. That was halfway down. What a good look and a good, good execution. Everything but the shot. That to roll home. Yeah, and Clark again continues to get Von Schmidt quality minutes off the bench. Right now, Oklahoma, a stop or two and a basket or two away. If he has to set the screen, Clark uses it. You know, for every McDonald's All American Bill Self gets, it's guys like Nadir Tharp. You think back to Darnell Jackson, Russell Robinson, Brady Morningstar. It's these guys that really make his program. They augment the great talent. Trailer the board, and this is Tharp. 
This guy averaged less than a point a game as a freshman. Six minutes. He was an accident waiting to happen with the ball. There, Withy couldn't convert as Osby got his hand on that one. Well, turnabout is finally fair play, I guess you could say, for Osby. Maybe a little too much passing inside. And you know why? The guy in the white jersey that wears number five. You shoot it. No, you shoot it. Withy in this one with five blocks. McLemore. Biggest lead of the game for the Jayhawks, up 14. Sooners call time. Another sellout here at the Fog. And the fans enjoying themselves. McLemore, the freshman, having a great year. Second leading score in the conference, leading Kansas. Now Ben McLemore having a great year, and he's given the Kansas Jayhawks more than enough. You like the shooting stroke? Oh, man, you talk about picture perfect. Take a look now. He's going to come off that screen. Great body balance, quick lift, great follow through. Here's another look at how he uses his legs and then the extension. Now, he's only taken seven shots tonight, and he only averages a little over ten shots on the season, John. If anything, Bill Self's tried to get him not to defer as much to his uh, older teammates, but you're talking about a guy right now, Lock City top five. Some people talking about number one if he comes out. And part of the reason is the ceiling for him is so high. It's only his first year of college basketball. Think about the career Danny Manning had, all-time leading scorer in Kansas history. McElroy right now would be the highest scorer in Kansas history for a freshman as Embi gets to the rim and throws it down. Nice drop by Jeff Buddy Heald. Again, a little penetration. Two freshman guards still out there. Galan Kruger learning on the job, if you will. They won't be guarding guys like Relaford and Elijah Johnson next year. But there'll be a couple more All-Americans coming in. <laughs> yep. Always. Yep. Feeding inside trailer is fouled by Embi. We talked about Buddy Heald's penetration. The freshman guards, Embi, just in his first year at Oklahoma. Good throw down by the transfer from Wyoming. Now they need a little more. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy. What will you do in five hours? And in part by Chase Freedom. Get your cash back. Go to chase.com slash freedom and activate bonus cash back today. And Wendy's. Now that's better. As passionate a fan base as you'll find, they start him young. And how about some great art? KU, you bet. Yeah. Nicely done. Simple. Simple but effective, right? Kansas at home leading by a dozen. John Chambi, Fran Priscilla, Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. The Jayhawks unbeaten in Big 12 play. Meanwhile, Oklahoma, they have lost once in the Big 12. Eight straight regular season titles for Bill Self's team. Last year, the NCAA runner-up. Last four games, Kansas has played in the Big 12. They're only averaging 61 points a game. And what happens, John, as you know quite well, you get into the conference play. Everybody knows everybody's tendencies. And they're just so tough to beat in here. Last six years, one loss. Bill Self has lost only seven times here. And again, 32 in a row. Second longest streak in the country. That loss goes to Texas. The afternoon after the team found out that Thomas Robinson's mom had passed away, and they were up all night, and certainly a very emotional experience. Scramble for the loose ball. You know, it's really interesting, and we've said that Kansas feels like they're up 20. 
but Oklahoma has actually gone toe to toe with them fairly well. They have missed a number of easy opportunities to score. And I think if you talk to Bill Self right now and ask him about his Kansas offense, he's not going to be pleased with it. But I think in part, John, because Oklahoma with their improved athleticism has done a pretty good job. Clark finds Johnson. And then that one deflected. It stays with Kansas. Elijah Johnson and Buddy Hill having a laugh because Buddy was trying to sell that call the other way to Joe DeRozo, who only did a, did a few thousand NBA games. Right? on Tharp. Young gives back to Tharp. Johnson tries. And healed with the rebound. He's on the go. Exploding at the rim and Rutherford, that great defense with the block. Here's Whippy. Defense into offense. We set it a ton today. Now, Rutherford looked like he made a great defensive play. And if he went vertical, that's a high, high IQ defensive play. Ron Kruger wanted contact, but that's about the fifth basket that they've denied and they've turned into. Two points for Kansas. That's a two for Pledger, and he has ten to lead the Sooners. And Kansas only giving up 35% from the field on the season. And they've been right at that number today, a little lower maybe. So they lead the country in that department. Tharp can't hit with the inside. And watch Hill, the freshman, thinks he's getting to the rim. and. So that's pretty good. Now, the hand's part of the ball, so there's not much argument there. But that leads to a run out in about the fifth easy Kansas basket today. That last foul on Heald, his first. Boy, Nadir Tharp, Mike Withy, John, I had doubts last year that he would even get quality time. See guys like Young and Tharp getting more time. McLemore. And you know, Fran, it's, it really is the way it works. Elijah Johnson and Travis Relford, same thing with those two guys early in their careers, didn't play a ton. Yep. Now, the, in, the, in fairness, some of those guys were highly recruited, but the simple fact is they've transformed their games to fit what Bill Self needs in a given year. I mean, Kevin Young was not recruited out of high school, but by just a handful of, of slow Division I schools in California. Riverside, Loyola Marymount, look at them. Little high low there with the feeds out of bounds. Kansas ball, 17 on the shot clock. Kevin Young averaged about 10 points, seven rebounds as a sophomore at Loyola Marymount, transferred, was going to go to San Diego State, changed his mind late when the Morris Twins left. I don't think anybody expected him to do this to him. Certainly not in California. And they'd love to throw. Shot clock at six. McLemore, smooth. 15 for the freshman. I've talked to three NBA GMs who think that there's a distinct possibility that he could go number one. And what's amazing about that is not many two guards have gone number one. You go back to Austin Carr, maybe Doug Collins. He's sort of a big point guard. But it's very rare that that happens, John. The lead at 15, largest of the game for Kansas. Heel. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's the kind of athleticism we've been talking about. He's made a huge impact on Oklahoma's basketball program. Young looking for help, and then eventually it's Johnson into the paint, and they get a block inside. Watch Buddy here. Fearless is uh, is what you call him. Look at that. Look at that body contortion right there. I think you got a chance to see that on Sports Center as healed the freshman, weaving his way, navigating past Jeff Whitby. Not easy to do. That's by design. 
When you drive baseline, your, your post player on the weak side goes right to the dotted circle of that restricted arc area. So Elijah Johnson always knows where Withy is. Healed. Osby a rebound. Ball fake, and he's fouled. Our under four timeout here in Lawrence. Jeff Whitney averaging 13 points a game this season. That's how many he has here today. And a lot of his looks from right in close. The seven footer throws it down. NBA Sunday Showcase is back and loaded with all stars. Ray Allen returns to the parquet floor with LeBron and the world champs at his side for a rematch of an epic Eastern Conference Finals. And see how Kobe and the Lakers measure up against KD and the best in the West. Then, Melo and the Knicks are a force in the East. Who will prevail when the Hawks land in the Big Apple? Tomorrow, it's Heat Celtics at 1 Eastern on ABC. Followed by Thunder Lakers at 3.30. Then at 6.30 on ESPN, it's Hawks-Knicks. Steve Weissman in studio following Kansas, Oklahoma. It is college game day coming up next year on ESPN. Reese, Digger, and Jay Billis. Oh, they're all getting ready. Oh, nice. Reese Davis is, is the, the man with the makeup right now. They're in Raleigh, NC State, North Carolina. For now, let's go back to Allen Fieldhouse. No makeup for us. Kansas by 15. John Chambi and Fran Priscilla. Oklahoma trying to pick up a win on the road. Time for our U.S. Army look of a leader. And a closer look. That Oklahoma's Romero Osby. Here's Lon Kruger. I think our guys, they appreciate the fact that he's genuine and doing it all for the right reasons. He's all about the team. No one puts more time in or works harder or is more consistent in practice. That's what you want out of your leading score. Well, he struggled today, as you can see, but he's coming off a career high 29 against Texas. And as he started his career, this is the state he got out of that Romero of Sydney Circus. Jeff Capel actually recruited him, and he practiced that year. Lon Kruger took over, and he is a tremendous role model, I think, for not only the young guys, but the entire program. Lon Kruger saying he's been a, a huge difference for them this year. Again, the Sooners off to a, a good start. 13-4, and 4-1 in conference. Well, they're in a gauntlet right now. Tough games. They've got Baylor come out, Kansas rematch soon as well. So they've got to weather this storm, which happens in the schedule. You know, a lot of times you say a team's in a slump. No, they're just playing three ranked teams in a row. You look at the Big Ten, and that happens all the time. Sometimes you play in a power conference. You've got to navigate the psychology of the schedule. Oh, wow. What a field. It flips it up and in. I saw Buddy Heald get 17 and a half in late November in a game at UTA in Dallas where they were down and he bailed them out. Right now they're scrapping. Look at this, look at this. Heald a takeaway and then Johnson fouls him. And that's a smart foul by Elijah Johnson. Without grabbing the jersey, that could have been a flagrant foul, flagrant one, but take a look right here. Watch the move first by Heal. This kid is a very good athlete. He has he's a knack for scoring, and then watch the athleticism. A good foul, smart foul. 14 fouls on Kansas. And four, by the way, on Johnson. As Embi is able to hit. And the lead down to 10. Timeout. John, I said this to you during that last break. I said. That game in Norman is going to be a much tougher game than the score indicates because Oklahoma has really struggled offensively, and yet they're within 10. Well, Big Monday, a primetime doubleheader on ESPN. is always brought to you by Bud Light. At 7, it's Pitt. Tough road test. They'll go up against Russ Smith at number 5, Louisville. Then at 9, it'll be number 3, Kansas. Going to Morgantown to take on West Virginia. Hit Louisville, Kansas, West Virginia. Big Monday. Presented by Bud Light. There's Oklahoma, there's Steve yeah. Henson. Steve played Hen for Ron Kruger. <laughs> he right now is doing a nice job of talking to the official, Gary Maxwell, without making a scene. Letting Gary Maxwell know. Steve Henson, the first guy that Ron Kruger ever recruited out of McPherson, Kansas. 
great player at Kansas State, played in the NBA, was an assistant in the NBA. And it was that 88 Elite Eight in the Pontiac Silver Dome that matched up the Wildcats and the uh, Kansas Jayhawks, Danny and the Miracles. That was the game that got Larry Brown's team to the Final Four. He might be the best shooter in the building, by the way. Steve Henson. Yeah. Great, great career foul shooter. Big stop right here if you're an Oklahoma fan. I know that. Rejects the screen. They move the basketball. Johnson. That's four seniors right there. Milking the clock. Great extra passing. That may be the dagger. 13-point advantage. Closing it on two to go. Healed now. Osby inside. Couldn't get it to go over Young. Ball fake and a foul. And they'll get that one on Young. That's number three. Well, watch this. Clock moving down. Great ball movement. No Velcro on anybody's hands. And they find Elijah Johnson in the corner. You look out there right now. Yourself has got four seniors. And by my way of thinking, he's got three fifth-year seniors because he's got Young, Withy, and Relative. And then the freshman, Mac. It doesn't matter what class he's in. <laughs> he's in a class by himself in some ways. Osby gets that one an 11-point game. The Sooners are going to have to do some work if they're going to pick up their first win here in Lawrence since 1993. Now Bill Self's gone small here because he's going to anticipate a lot of dribble handoff. Uh, excuse me. Ball handling versus the pressure. Relaford, and he gets bumped, and they'll get that foul on Heald. That's his second. And team foul number six. Well, five team fouls on Kansas. Buddy Heald, part of that outstanding freshman class, those three guards, Hornby, Heald, and Cousins. Now remember, they've got a new shot clock here, Kansas, and that's what Bill Self exactly wants. So they're going to keep Oklahoma on this end for about 35, 40, 45, maybe 50 seconds on one possession. Setting a screen, Johnson, McLemore, pretty good look. Well, McLemore with 18 on the day. He's their leading scorer in the season, a little over 16. Does he have a smooth jump shot or what? There's, there's no extra wasted motion. Watch this pass now. There's the drive, the kick. Watch the compact stroke right there. No wasted motion. You know, some people compare him to Ray Allen. It's somewhat sacrilegious because of the incredible career that Ray Allen has had. But you know what? There's always got to be another Ray Allen coming along. Up next on ESPN College Game Day, covered by State Farm. It's followed by Saturday Primetime, presented by DirecTV, UNC, and NC State, North Carolina, and number 18. NC State. Up 20 to go here, and it's Kansas by 13. Kansas, the favorite in the league. It'll be interesting to see who ends up being the second best team in this league. And Oklahoma in that conversation, along with K State, Baylor, Iowa State, even. I think we've seen some teams starting to improve and grow. Of course, the Big 12's in a transition year of sorts because of all the great players that have left the league. But what all of a sudden, what Iowa State, made. Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, all playing good basketball. Lock winding down. That one flipped up, won't go. Tharp will go to the line for two.
Kansas here in the second half. One of the reasons they've been able to hold off Oklahoma. Good three-point shooting since the break. Six for 12 from the three-point line. I think Lon Kruger is going to be able to clip about 10 plays in this game that he can show his team. Five come to mind. Block shots, turnovers that led to easy runouts. That if you take away those plays, he's going to be able to convince his team in a couple of weeks that they have a chance to beat this team at Lloyd Noble. And I think Bill Self will get his team feeling the same way. And they will not come unprepared. And by at Withy and puts it home. I think Withy just got tired of jumping. <laughs> but a strong move by the junior transfer. Right, as the game clock winds down, Kansas is going to make it 33 in a row at home and 17 straight overall. That's 17 in a row, the nation's longest win streak. Only loss of the year for the Jayhawks early on against Michigan State. It's only been 75 days since Kansas has lost a basketball game. When you see the upcoming schedule, John. I will be at. Uh, I will be in Morgantown on Monday night with Holly and Brent. And we'll be there for the rematch yep. at Oklahoma February 9th, you and I. Let's see, in 75 days, we've had a fiscal cliff. We've had the Harbaugh brothers in the Super Bowl. A lot of stuff going on in the shore. Two and a half months, right? Osby can do and it's come a little bit late but any little bit helps Osby fouling Tharp the fans wondering a little bit why they're still fouling well, I think that time he was trying to get the cheap steal and then inadvertently bumped into Tharp by the way Tharp's not unhappy at all he is not unhappy that he's going to get a chance to pad his stats so great fans here at Allen Fieldhouse, they understand basketball. That booing was short-lived. <laughs> <laughs> you showed you Kansas and their upcoming schedule. Baylor is next for Lon Kruger's team. They will fall to four and two in league play, 13 and five overall. And then that rematch with Kansas at Iowa State is always difficult. You saw those those teams, some, some pretty good teams. They've got to be able to get three of those next five. And being greedy, you'd love to get four, but you just want to pile up as many wins as you can. Now the game, game day coming up. And of course, our primetime game, NC State, UNC. Osby can't get it to go. And that'll do it here in Lawrence. Bill Self's team, 33 straight at home, 17 in a row overall. 67-54, our final Kansas over Oklahoma. For Fran Fraschilla and our entire crew, I'm John Shabby saying so long from Lawrence, Kansas. Up next, it's college game day. time rivalry both sides have to win from time to time North Carolina takes on NC State tonight and the Tar Heels have ripped off 13 in a row against the Wolfpack but this time it's the pack that's ranked they believe tonight will be the night that it changed and they hope it changes behind this guy CJ Leslie had 25 when NC State beat Duke here in this building earlier but not more than 13 cents North Carolina is going to counter with a quickly maturing James Michael McAdoo, one of the more explosive players in the ACC, hoping to keep his team's three-game winning streak alive. And a guy who's the tough guy, Richard Howell, and his beard, going to come in, cause a little scuffling.
tonight against the Tar Heels in an effort to get North Carolina State on the winning track. They're unbeaten here at home tonight, but a guy who is keyed in North Carolina offense, Reggie Bullock, averaging nearly 18 over his last three games. A tobacco road battle between the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack tonight. College Game Day, covered by State Farm.